Hey there, looking to level up your shopping experience? Let me introduce you to Amazon Live. If you haven't heard, it's a shoppable video experience where influencers and creators showcase the latest must-haves all while you shop in real time. And for those who love some celeb gossip, reality stars like Kyle Richards, Lala Kent, and friend of the pod, Paige DeSorbo. On her new show, In Bed with Paige DeSorbo, Paige invites top-tier guests to cozy up in her fluffy bed where they spill secrets, share nighttime routines, and even whip up midnight snacks. Stream and shop new episodes of her series, In Bed with Paige DeSorbo, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. ET by going to amazon.com slash live slash page underscore DeSorbo. Or you can watch Amazon Live's new live TV channel on Freebie or Prime Video under the DIY section and shop along on your phone. Stay Farm and DJ Dramos from Life as a Gringo know making smarter financial moves today secures a financial freedom for a successful tomorrow. Now we have a level of privilege that our parents never had. So what do we do with it, right? How do we, how do we utilize the opportunities that we have that they don't, right? And a lot of that is educating ourselves, educating ourselves on how to not make the same mistakes they did. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm, proud sponsor of My Cultura Podcast Network. Welcome to 31 Days of Terror, day number 17. And I have one spooky story for you today. And our story today comes from the 29th of August, 2024. If you're an eagle ear listener, you'll be like, hang on a second, we've, we've gone back in time. Yes, I had to do some strategic moving around of stories. So you will hear us flip between times every now and then. And our story today comes from Rachel. I had a menacing spirit that haunted me from early childhood up until I was about 20 years old. It began when I was around eight and we had moved into a new house. My room was in the upstairs corner and the very corner of that room, the corner of the house, I suppose, felt dark. It filled me with dread, honestly, and I would avoid looking in that corner. I never put anything there. It was just to the left of my bed, so I generally slept on my stomach or my right side until I was older. I don't remember any one specific incident early on, just that I could sense the entity was male and that it was hateful. When I was about 12, we did a shuffle of bedrooms and I was so glad, hoping to get away from the dark feeling of that bedroom. Unfortunately, my new bedroom was directly below the old one, so not much work for this entity to drop down a floor. Same corner on the left side of my bed. It would wait until I was alone and then I could just feel it turn its attention on me and radiate a lot of negativity that I didn't even have a name for at that age. It got so bad that I took to sleeping on a flip chair on the opposite side of the room. I was raised Southern Baptist, which is very black and white on spiritual matters. Everything they didn't approve of was from Satan. So, of course, in my mind, this entity was a demon, if not the devil himself. I hesitate to diss Southern Baptists or Christianity in general. That's not my point here today. But for me, their approach to religion only produced fear in my heart and fanned the flames to the utmost height. When I was 19, I moved three hours away to massage school. I was so excited about the new start and had begun exploring spiritually a little more outside of my family and was looking forward to the privacy and freedom. I loved my tiny little apartment, and I loved having my friends come down and visit. One friend brought tarot cards with her, and we began using them. I bought some oracle cards for myself, and we did readings. I grew in leaps and bounds that summer. But that first night, though, the entity returned in full force and fury. Being older, I began to feel the very real threat of physical violence and sexual violence projected in this energy, and his utter disdain and fury. I could tell you precisely where the entity was floating, although I could not see him with my naked eyes. He frequently would hover in the doorway to my room, and I would say prayers trying to keep him out, but I really was completely cowed and lay there in terror not moving, 
until he would finally back away. This did not let up, and in fact ramped up while I was in that apartment. I got to where I didn't want to be alone, and the moment class let out on Friday, I would drive three hours home to my parents for the weekend. One night though, my tarot friend was down visiting, and as we were lying in bed talking, I began to feel him lingering outside the door. Dread crept over me because I knew that soon she would be asleep and I would be alone. She fell asleep straight away. It took me a while, but I finally did too. Unfortunately, I fell into a nightmare. I was at a big party or family reunion. It felt like everyone I've known in my life was present. And I was running from person to person telling them that he was after me and he was going to get me. No one would listen. Or they would turn away from me or look at me in disdain. No one believed me or cared. He was going to get me. I could feel it. I could feel it coming. I jolted awake. The feeling from the dream was the same, but now it was magnified because the entity was laying on top of me. I was asleep on my stomach, and it was at my neck furiously trying to fight its way in. I have never in my nearly six decades felt as afraid as I was at that moment. I didn't dare open my eyes or blink or even twitch. He pressed against me in absolute fury but could not get past some barrier and it was pissing him off. Eventually, and very slowly, he drifted off. I was absolutely terrified. You must understand that I am a fairly meek creature by nature. Part of that was due to my upbringing, raised to be seen and not heard. And as a girl in the church, you were not important and should stay in your place. I internalised all of this very successfully and I'm still trying to unlearn it 40 years later. This season, in this apartment, was when I learned a secret. I do actually have power. Me. I have power. I wasn't entirely sure I believed it yet, but I had to find a way to rid myself of this evil. A few weeks later, my opportunity arrived. I was sitting in the living room of my apartment and had just laid out cards for a tarot reading, and he was back. He was leaning on the doorframe to my room, glaring at me. My back was to him and I sat there fuming. Suddenly, I was so tired of being scared. That was the turning point. I was done. This was not acceptable. I allowed all the pent-up fury and anger I wasn't ever allowed to show come bubbling up and I screamed at him to get out. He was taken aback but not deterred. I repeated it, but doubting myself, I added... In the name of Jesus, I command you to get out and never, ever bother me again. And it worked. He was gone. He had been hounding me for over a decade. But I can tell you, since this occurred in 1989, he has not been back. Not that I haven't had other troubles. As you listen to this story, depending on your own beliefs, you may think my story is showing the power of the name of Jesus. It's not. There absolutely is power in the name of Jesus, but only if you believe in Jesus. It's not about the God. It's not about the prayer. It's about sovereignty, personal will and ownership. If you have given your personal will and power, your sovereignty to a deity, you may or may not need to borrow their name to access that power. The name still works for me because it was ingrained in my psyche from birth. But I don't borrow power anymore. I use my own. I have done so successfully, clearing spaces and chasing off beasties for decades under my own power. Because truly, you may only need the power of your own will, and a declaration of sovereignty to claim your space. That's the little secret I share with you today. It's okay to be scared, but in the end, remember your own power. I recently listened to episode 371 talking about past lives, and I wanted to share my experiences with you. In my personal spiritual practice, I will often put myself in a deep trance state to contact spirit guides, deities, ancestors, and even people's deceased pets. I have also had the privilege to work with other gifted practitioners and both separately and with others have uncovered a number of my past life experiences. Several of them seem related, so I am going to share those three today. The first was brought about in a shamanic journey, hypnosis, with a trusted friend. In the vision, I am a child, I would say a tween or a young teen, and I am with several other younger people, and we are running for our lives. Everything is brown here, 
the high narrow stone buildings, the cobblestone streets, the clothes of the people we are speeding past. They are coming for us. We duck around people and carts and through alleys and the terror that I am feeling is unbelievable. My heart is pounding out of my chest. We have done it now. Everyone is keeping their heads down, staying out of it. We know better than to ask for help. Me and another boy, I am currently a woman, end up in an alley and there are several barrels cast aside and we right them and each climb into one and with some difficulty pull the lids back on them and sit in almost complete darkness in the dank mouldy barrel legs going numb the heart still pumping so fast minutes hours i hear boots bile in my throat the sound of a barrel being kicked over and a gunshot the lid lifts off my barrel and then blackness. Needless to say, this was a distressing vision to have. The thing with these visions is that they are not just visual. There is the light quality, the feel of your clothes, the smells, the emotions, the thoughts, the personality, it's all there. I've also had a memory of threshing a field and waving to a passing cart. Couldn't get more innocuous. I think the heightened or strong emotions are more common. My best guess is that this is Eastern Europe early 20th century, but could be earlier. I have no idea, honestly, what I was to glean from viewing this life. The next two are my latest visions and they happened in quick succession. They could be the same life or they could be separate, I don't know. I'm going to preface this story by explaining that in the 90s, as I was exploring my spirituality, I went to a messianic congregation for a while. A messianic congregation is a Christian church that takes on all the elements of Judaism. I visited with a friend and the moment the music started something happened to me. It's like everything fell apart and rearranged inside. I knew this music, not the words, not the notes, but it was somehow a part of me. I didn't understand, I thought it was just God. I developed a love for Jewish music and music in Yiddish etc. I left there when I became pagan, it was quite the journey, but the love of the music is a part of me always. On to my story. I was listening to Spotify one night last year. I have an adjustable bed and I put it in 0G mode, turned out the lights and put on my headphones. I was tired of my usual playlist and pulled up a song I'd had in my head for a while, one of the old songs in Hebrew I'd loved. It had a chorus of men singing a prayer as a bridge in the song and I fell in. Suddenly I was a very small child, under two for sure, and I was in bliss. I was drifting in and out of sleep to the sounds of the men chanting their prayers. I was on my mother, my head near her neck, and I am a limp noodle. The extreme state of relaxation you only see in cats and infants. I felt that. It was amazing. She felt wonderful to me, sweat and milk. And I hear the women and their low conversation and hushed laughter in the corner of the room. All these sounds and smells means all is well, I am safe. At that point I realised I was having a vision, which of course pulled me back out of it, but I was crying. The complete state of bliss and safety was phenomenal. I said thank you to whatever power had allowed me to see that. But I was in such a state of bliss that I continued listening. I guess I wasn't completely back, because I fell right back into it, but this time I was in the hay, under the stairs. I'm not supposed to be awake, but I can't help it. My siblings are asleep around me, but I have sat up and I am peeking through the open stairs into the main room of the cottage, where my father is practicing the violin. There is only one candle lit and I can see his eyes closed in concentration as he plays being carried by the music as I look at his face. I am carried away too and filled with so much love. I love him so much. And the music. I shouldn't be watching. I'll be tired in the morning but it's worth it. I always listen. I again realise I'm not actually laying in hay and I come to crying again. The emotion some of the most powerful I felt. In that vision I was no more than four or five. What beautiful visions. What a gift. I'm not in the best headspace right now. My life is a bit of a shambles and I don't feel safe and I don't feel love. I am working on making the changes necessary to get me back to a good place, but the universe gave me respite. 
and two memories that I can use as touchstones when I need them. When I need to relax, I can remember the synagogue and laying on my mother's breast, and when I need to feel a pure and true love, I can remember watching my father play the violin. Since these are relatively short, I'll give you a bonus. My other vision of being Jewish, I am 99% English, Irish and Norwegian by the way, physically at least. I don't remember when I had this one, it's been at least 20 years, but I remember it vividly. I'm at a table in a meeting. They are droning on, my life is torture, accounting, profits, everyone is in their suits, payout at the temples, bobbing as they talk, my body is here but I am not. They all look down on me, I am useless. My hands are under the table and my fingers are playing a melody, swiftly over my clarinet. In my mind, anyway. Always a song in my head, always playing, fingers always moving, practicing. Even if I can't hold my clarinet, I can be practicing. I hear it in my head and in my soul. God gave this to me, but I sit in a meeting. My spirit soars with the music, so much colour and life, but these men and their paper, I will never escape. This is my life, my duty, my birthright, and it is killing my soul. I remember awakening from this vision in awe. I love music. I never made it past second chair and clarinet, so I slacked off. My fingers never stopped moving, though, ever. So much so that I typed for a living for many years. My fingers were moving anyway. I felt so deeply for this man, so trapped in the family business that he hated by birth and by duty when he was clearly a profoundly gifted musician. I could feel how badly he wanted to run, but if he left, he could never come back. It was probably Europe, probably 1800s, but kind of hard to tell. There were no electric lights. So going back to the beginning of this story, it, it sounds like, obviously, whatever, you know, whatever entity it was that followed you from the time you were eight was really fucking horrible and negative. And I guess, you know, when you're eight years old, when you're little, you don't have the language to express how this how this thing is making you feel or like the nature of the negativity that it is radiating. I just feel so sorry for a little you sleeping on a flip chair on the opposite side of the room because this this negative energy was so bad. However, obviously, you know, at 19 and moving out and exploring that spirituality and exploring Things like tarot cards and oracle cards and stuff obviously was really good for you and your psyche. But I am really sorry that you had to go through that for so long. And I'm really glad that you were able to go, no, fuck this, actually. I'm not putting up with this. We're not continuing with this. This is not happening in my house anymore. And that you were able to get rid of it, so to speak. And I really found your kind of journey through hypnosis and visions and shamanic journeys really interesting to have those experiences that are so visceral where you can you know feel your heart pound in your chest you can feel the emotions you can smell the smells you can you know feel your own personality like it's pretty amazing and especially when it's not just negative horrible visions like obviously the the first vision of hiding in the barrels that's hideous horrible terrifying but then that lovely vision of being a child in your mother's arms and at um a spiritual religious service a synagogue potentially and hearing the chanting and just being really content and feeling really safe like that's a really beautiful thing to experience you know and as an adult I don't think it's very often that you get to experience that feeling of being completely relaxed and safe and at one with yourself and at one with your surroundings so what a beautiful thing for for the universe whatever it was to have shown you that and listen, right, I know you said life isn't great right now, but um, I hope it gets better. And I hope that you are looking after yourself because that's very important too. Thank you so much for listening to day number 17 of 31 Days of Terror 2024. Thank you to Rachel for sending in your stories. And if you would like to send in your story, you could do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast.gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com and if you are desperate for some extra content you can subscribe to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories where for $5 a month or $2 a month you get access to heaps of extra content as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note, I shall see you next time. 
To get people excited about Boost Mobile's new nationwide 5G network, we're offering unlimited talk, text, and data for $25 a month. Forever. Even if you have a baby. Even if your baby has a baby. Even if you grow old and wrinkly and you start repeating yourself. Even if you start repeating yourself. Even if you're on your deathbed and you need to make one last call. Or text. Right, or text. The long-lost son you abandoned at birth. You'll still get unlimited talk, text, and data for just $25 a month with Boost Mobile. Forever. After 30 gigabytes, customers may experience slower speeds. Customers will pay $25 a month as long as they remain active on the Boost Unlimited plan. Forever.